we're going to go ahead and use the capture step. So this is what you want to use when you are capturing information from a user. So if I drag this out, you'll see that it looks quite different from the capture step in previous voice. This is because this is the AI capture step. It's actually using AI natively to be able to capture multiple pieces of information. There's two ways to use this capture step. The first one is entities. So this is when you are capturing specific pieces of information, like a name or an email. The other one is the entire user reply. So this is what we did in step two, when you wanted to capture the user's entire issue, right? This could be an entire paragraph. So that's where you want to use entire user reply. Now, in the entity section, this is where I can actually determine what I want to capture. So in this case, I've got two already made, so customer email and customer name. But if you haven't created any, any already, you just go to create entity, you can type it in and make sure you be descriptive with what this is because the AI is going to use a name as a part of trying to figure out what to capture. So if I said email, we have a bunch of pre-built data types. So email, geography, name that are pre-trained with a bunch of data so the AI can understand what it should capture. But if you're doing something custom like a product name, for example, then you want to hit custom and you can add in your own values. So you want to make sure you can add as many values as you can. So for example, a product name, put in all the product names and the variations. And that way the AI can determine what it should actually be capturing within what a user says. The next part that's going to be pretty important are these three settings over here. So no reply is for if you're creating more voice experiences, you can determine if someone hasn't said something within a couple seconds, you can determine what that time is and actually add a reprompt to say, hey, are you still there? Automatic reprompt is very important. You wanna make sure that this is on when you're capturing entities. This is gonna look at what's been captured so far. So if I give a name, for example, but I don't give an email, it'll be able to say, hey, please provide your business email. I know notice you didn't get that. So this is gonna use AI to fill in the missing information and kind of prompt the user to give you everything that you're asking for. Listen for other triggers is if you want uh, this to be open, right? So if I said submit a support ticket, it would jump me to a support ticket. But if you wanna lock a user in at this step and don't let them leave until they finish it, you can turn this off as well. Now rules and exit scenarios are where it gets very interesting. This is where you can add in specific rules about what you wanna capture. So for example, I don't want just any email, I only want business emails. So let's add a few rules here. First rule is going to be only capture business emails, do not accept personal or education emails. Now the second rule is going to be about the name. I want the full name, so I want first and last. Make sure to capture the full name, so that's a user's first and last name. And the last rule here is I want to make sure that we don't move forward without creating capturing an email. It shouldn't do this, but I just want to make sure anyways, just because the email is the most important part to actually like capturing or booking a demo. Make sure to capture the user's email. Do not move forward unless you have done this. Now, these are pretty good. In exit scenarios, uh, a specific scenario, if you want a user to be able to escape this. So for example, let's say someone doesn't have a business email, right? Like I don't want them to be stuck in here forever. And so I'm going to create an exit scenario that says, exit if a user does not have a business email after prompting them a few times, or if they say that they just don't have one in general. Great. So now I've created an exit email. I've created all these rules. So let's try this out. Just some quick steps here. So in this first message, let's just say, great, let's book a demo. And in the second message, let's say, unfortunately, I need a business email to book a demo. Okay, now, so now let's test this out. So first off, we're going to go ahead and say, Let's just go train this so our NLU is trained. My name is Daniel and email is daniel at gmail.com. So I didn't give a last name and I didn't give a business email. So let's see what it does. Okay, cool. So it says, thank you, Daniel. Could you please provide a business email instead of a personal one? So you can see that it's working here. And if you turn on debug mode, which is what all these messages are, it's actually going to show you what's going on in the background. So it said it reprompted and the rationale was because the user provided a first name and an email but the email's personal and we need to get a business email. So let's kind of keep going here and say, sure, my email is daniel at stanford.edu. So we're gonna give it an education email. So let's see what it does now. Okay, cool. So it says, hey, can you give me a business email instead of an educational one? So I'll just say daniel at voiceflow.com and my last name is D'Souza. Okay, awesome. And you can see that it took the path, a great let's book a demo. So it was able to capture that and if I check my email and name, it captured danielvoice.com and it got my full name. So really easy, much easier than it used to be in the past. And you can start doing this with like many different types of entities. And so let's try out the exit scenario now, right? So I said the exit scenario was if I didn't have one. So I'm gonna say, my name is Daniel Souza, and I don't business email, but my personal one 
is daniel at gmail.com. So it said, you know, we can only provide with business email. Do you have one you can share? I'm going to say no. And awesome. So it took our exit path. So listen to that prompt pretty well. Let's just go check in the debug mode. So it said rationale was that the user provided their full name, but not a business email. And then finally, when I said no, it said the user provided their full name does not have a business email, which is required to proceed. This matches the exit condition for not having a business email. So this is super, super smooth. Uh, and you can see how this is actually going to change your projects and make them much more dynamic. 